The past week I've been busy modeling the Typhoon frame on Fusion 360. I have lots of custom parts that I intend to make for this build, such as the front fairing and lighting system, so having a model to work off is great, as I can see how things will look before I actually physically make anything. I can try different tyre sizes, as well as suspension components, and verify the kind of ground clearance that results. I have a few different configurations in mind for this bike, and I will be using this model to test the look and feel before committing to any physical construction. Having the Fusion 360 model will also allow me to work on the swing arm components, even after sending it to lightning rods, and it also lets me show you guys a better look of what the bike will look like a long time before the final assembly of the parts. The model allows me to print parts at scale, like the swing arm, which is actually a quarter scale. I might actually end up with a scale model of the bike by the end. Although modelling on the computer does a good job of illustrating the design, it's nice to be able to touch physical components to see how they work as well. Other benefit to scaling is a reduction in the amount of printer filament that I consume, and perhaps more importantly, a prototype part would print in minutes rather than hours. Now the frame is modelled, I can move on to designing the parts that will make up the bike. The first part I've looked at is the rear dropouts, which need to be altered to allow a drivetrain to be correctly tensioned. So I've come up with a variation of the chain tensioner that I saw on the Sir Ron, and it bolts or it welds to the hole pattern on the swing arm that I got from Vector. I think that the development of this part really demonstrates the true power of 3D printing to rapidly prototype parts and designs. When Mike at LR gets these parts, he's going to know exactly what I'm looking for. Not only that, but he can hold in his hands a functional part. The swing arm, as it comes from Vector, has these um, vertical style dropouts. And they work fine for hub motors, but it doesn't allow for a chain to be tensioned with a mid-drive motor. So to enable the tensioning of the chain, the dropouts need to have a mechanism to create this horizontal tension. So this system is configured to work with a single piece through axle. So the axle, which is simulated here, would run between these two blocks here and here. And then it's locked into place with one single bolt that runs, or one single axle, I guess, that runs all the way through here. So the tension for the chain is created by these bolts here that run horizontal and you can adjust the nut here to put more tension and push the axle back and you can square up the back wheel using both of these and then once it's in the position you want you can then put the proper tension or the proper torque on the axle to lock that into place. Um, I've created a few different versions of this part uh, there's this one here which is a shorter version um, this one here is a slightly longer version which would enable you to have you know different wheel sizes in the back of the bike um, and these demonstration parts and this swing arm is now going to be packed in a nice box and sent to lightning rods um, Mike's going to be sending some photos um, of how this is going together and I'm going to be able to keep you all up to date with progress as the drive itself is built onto this part of the swing arm so in the next little while I'm going to be continuing to work on the 3D model and more importantly perhaps I'm going to be working on some of the other components um, like there's going to be work on the seating component and then there'll be stuff for mounting the controller on the bike uh, lots of good stuff um, the front fairing as well so yeah if you have any questions let me know and uh, thanks for watching the channel and hope you're enjoying the build so far cheers